Now, here comes the music. Well, hello, everyone. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? Well, I happen to know where two DJs are at. It's a DJ roundtable. I'm here with you, as well as DJ Fire. I got to point my hands the right direction. <laughs> DJ <laughs> Fire is here with me. Uh, a little hiatus he had uh, working his uh, 5,000 jobs he has, not only doing uh, the DJ world uh, a favor with all the lighting and uh, DMXing and uh, set up, you know, beautiful set ceremonies and setups for parties, but also he has a landscaping business. And if you don't know, he has a review channel that he reviews gear. So if you have not done so already, you know, make sure you go over there, follow him. You know, you can follow DJ Fire, uh, Nathan343. You can follow that too. You can go to reviews. Uh, you can, he has his channel also for his uh, um, his landscaping business, including he has a garden he's been working on. Uh, New Horizon Lawn Care is the, uh, is the lawn care channel. And the garden's almost done. We've got cucumbers and tomatoes left. And then I've got a few fall things I planted, but we'll see if they come up or not. Any pumpkins? No, I put uh, a fall... Fall green beans, and I put uh, some turnips, beets. What else did I put? Turnips, beets, carrots, and cabbage out, I believe. Okay. Well, that's so we'll cool. see if they come up. We've had quite a bit of rain, and the rain gets the ground crusted, and the plants don't want to push up through, especially green beans, because green beans have to come up like this, like a piece of corn can bore up through it, but... Yeah, and it, uh, when you're down in central Illinois, you're you're in the heart of Illinois' farm belt. And uh, most of the state of Illinois, you know, I, I'm up here in the Chicagoland area. And, you know, I actually, I'm out in the suburbs. I'm pretty far west. I have probably maybe, what is it, one, two, three towns. So, uh, let's see here, Carroll Stream, West Chicago, St. Charles. Once again, another hey, I've got Charles, a phone call to take real quick. I'll be right back. I've okay. been waiting for this call all day. No problem. <laughs> but um, I also want to do a shout out to the uh, Luxury Bridal Expo for Chicago and Milwaukee. Um, I got a nice, real nice letter for them talking about their uh, wedding shows coming up. And one of the cool things they did, they actually sent, because again, Nathan here being someone who deals with stuff, uh, seeds, forget-me-nots, uh, to plant next year, next spring, uh, for uh, not to forget about next year's, uh, oh, Aaron, the DJ, got to admit him. Got to let him in, got to let Aaron in, got to let my friend Aaron, my Canadian brother in. Uh, but again, they, they, they sent me these. Hey, Aaron, they sent me these to... Hey, Aaron, uh, they sent me these to remind me next year that, you know, plant seeds early and it will grow for the wedding show. So, again, that is a shout out to the uh, Luxury Bridal Expo for Chicago, Milwaukee. If you're in the Chicagoland area and you want to go to a wedding show, I would <coughs> I would definitely would recommend. We've been there plenty of times. Um, I will be at probably a few more, uh, hopefully maybe this year, but we'll see. Uh, we are very, very, very busy. Um, I still have uh, 18 more weddings to go for this year. Um, it, it's just, it's crazy. Um, I have uh, tons of, uh, you know, folders here. This is just two for today. I had call facilities for uh, setting stuff up, and I have also have music here I have to work on as well. So as a working DJ, it's always one of those hard things. And speaking of working DJ, I know a man who works very hard up to the north, great white north, uh, DJing. Uh, he's a fellow Twitch DJ like I am, as well as he's a wedding DJ and also a party DJ. Uh, Aaron up there, Aaron the DJ, thank you for coming in today and joining us. Um, I know it's always a, always a hard thing because your schedule is it's probably more crazy than my schedule is, uh, not only with his family, but just uh, – 
the way he has parties and stuff like that up there. Uh, they try to party very hard uh, because when the snow hits, we well, have to harder up there. You have to. You got no choice. Yeah. Um, when, you're, when you're up when you're up by Calgary, it, it's a little bit harder of a uh, a little bit harder of a snow hit. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, having Twitch issues right now. Actually, I'm trying to redo a bunch of stuff and put some scenes in, and I'm having an issue with mine. So it's like. I'm All gonna, right, I'm back, guys. I'm going to quit it, and I'm going to try again. Sometimes that's all you can do is restart it. Yeah, um, yeah. Got to love Twitch. Yeah, how are you guys doing tonight? Everybody doing good? I'm doing good. Nathan just got a million-dollar contract. Wicked. He's looking at me like, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, he, he was waiting for a phone. You know what the cool thing is? What's like that? if we did this right, we could do like high five. Like it looked like we'd be high fiving, you know? Wait, 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 yeah, wait. Woo, there we go. Well, yeah, hold on. Okay, it's this side. My right, yeah. my right is your. And I'm, See, I'm, I'm going when, to... I'm, right when I'm looking at you. When I'm looking at you, fire. You got to go the other way, buddy. You go, go to your left. Yeah, you go. There you go. That's the. See, that's yeah, the my, my, my <laughs> on Twitch. This is I'm actually hitting. A, looks like I'm hitting a wall. <laughs> if you so, guys are not live here watching here on twitch on uh the twitch channel on tf yeah. productions underscore buddy and you're watching this on youtube you guys are missing a lot of fun especially if you guys could be in the chat talking asking questions uh again we do this every tuesday at uh eight o'clock uh central time so that is uh nine o'clock eastern time and that is uh, six o'clock Pacific time. So if you're out in the West Coast, uh, California, or in Oregon, or Washington State, or uh, I think parts of Nevada and Arizona, uh, it is uh, it's six o'clock. If you're in the mountain area, that's seven o'clock. It's you know you always ask, you always say a message. And oh, there's DJ Fire. I see him in the chat. Hey y'all. Um, I see him in the chat. So make sure chat was working. <laughs> Appreciate it. And you guys are if you guys are back there lurking, watching, and not a follower of the channel. Hey, enjoy. If you have a question, talk about it in the chat. The chat is always open, even the lurkers. So if you're lurking out there in Twitch, you're watching, go, what's going on? What we're talking about. We're a wedding and event DJ channel. Um, when I'm on here, I do DJ, I do play music videos on here. Uh, but also, uh, I'm, I'm a real world DJ. I'm a, I, I'll do, I do weddings. Uh, Nathan does weddings and events, and so is Aaron the DJ. He does uh, weddings and events. So you have DJ Fire, myself, and Aaron the DJ. We're real DJs. Uh, so if you have a question about, you know, a question you would want to ask a DJ, ask. If you're another DJ, you have questions, ask. We we're, we want to pass our knowledge of what we've done. So you guys don't fall in the same problems that we've had in the past. And we yeah. have no problem talking about our problems. So with that said, with problems, Aaron, I know you had uh, quite a ride for your last uh, gig. Uh, did you run into any problems or anything? Anything you want to you talk to the crowd oh, and man. families and friends about? My, I, I do. And, I, and I'm hoping there's a, a lot more DJs than not watch this and uh my last event got postponed by rain throughout the day oh, so everything got pushed back they had an outdoor wedding planned out in the rocky mountains beautiful banff alberta uh they couldn't have picked a better spot but mother nature had other plans and uh completely dumped on their day and it didn't delay it just a bit it delayed it a lot uh, we didn't, we didn't get, to, we didn't get played at dinner until nine o'clock. Oh uh, man. So, so as you can imagine, like I have, you know, their song list ready to go. And I, of course I was prepped for my wedding. So I pulled out, you know, a hundred at least songs in a, in a side list, just to be like, Hey, I might play this. I might play this. I might play this. And I'm like, Oh, I got them picking out some good flow. And it's like, then the venue comes over and they said, you are done. Last song by midnight. You have to be cleared out of here by one. So right then and there, I said, like, I'm not sure 
how that's going to go. And I'm like, we haven't even, we haven't done anything yet. Like none of the dances, none of the, we haven't done anything yet. How in the world are we going to pull this off? And they said, well, that's not really our problem. I mean, it was rain. There's nothing we can do about that. I said, what if you gave us to one? And they said, no, this is a chalet area. There's people that live around here really close to the venue. And we've already pushed it to midnight. So I said, okay. So essentially, by the time we got done everything, flowers, bouquet, the garter, you know what I mean? Cut the cake. Got through the speeches. I had 75 minutes to play their stuff. So... Was it a mistake to pull out and play all the bangers from all the genres? Or should I have stayed more within one or two genres and just made good flow? Um, I went with the other ideal of trying to give a little bit of something to everybody. You know, so I give you like a couple bangers from the 60s, a couple from the 70s, like a couple of top hits of the 80s, 90s. And in doing that, I was doing a lot of like short mixes and looking back on it in hindsight that was not the right thing to do i don't think i should have short mixed those songs um i know a lot of djs do that anyway they do a lot of short mixing but for a well, little there, bit of an older DJs, crowd, there's there's some djs oh, aaron like yeah. um a certain dj from new jersey um he fe feels that you know it's basically 30 seconds of song he thinks he's tiktok uh i'm not yeah I, 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 don't I don't agree with him but I don't feel that it works on the room with, especially with the slightly older crowd. Maybe if it was all people in their early twenties, that might fly, but I tried short, short mixing all my stuff in. And I'm telling you at the end of the night, I kind of regret it. Uh, I look back on it. And I'm like, no, nah, I should have played most of those songs out songs from the anything like pre 2000. I don't think you should short mix. Maybe some of the, some of the like, euro techno stuff from the mid 90s yeah you can get away with it and it's not bad. you can make it sound good but i think for the most part people within say like their 30s 40s 50s 60s and later they want to hear the song it's just my opinion the way my night worked out just from my experience i don't think it was as good as it could have been if i had dumped half my list and just said, you know what? I'm not going to make it to the new stuff. I'm not going to make it to the kid music. I'm not going to make it to the to the young crowd stuff. And I'm not going to go into the high BPM uh, dance music. And that's what I should have done. And I tried really hard to hit it and to get through, to give a little something to everybody. I tried too hard to appeal to everyone in the room when I should have just went for the vast majority and done my traditional long mix and just kind of stuck with um you know just the stuff i know that works the crowd and i tried to give a little bit too much to everybody so i think that was kind of my i could have done better it was okay nobody complained the the, the couple bride and the groom they were happy at the end of the night everybody said oh it was good i feel i could have done better that's just me being hard on me you know as we should be hard on each other on ourselves um to try to be better right so that's where I'm Aaron, at. You're always doing a good job, no matter how, uh, how bad you think you are. Don't put yourself down. You did, you did what you could do with what the conditions you had. Yeah, it was tough. I just think we, I could have done next time. I know not to short it and just like stay within the eighties. Like you can't really lose with a, a mid range age. Like the median in the room was probably 55, 50. I should have just stuck with the eighties and and just stayed in that pocket you know what i mean and just said really sorry i couldn't play any new stuff folks we're out of time um venue rules you know don't want to piss them off so but the venue was happy the manager of the venue was really happy with what he took came and took a business card from me and said you know we'll keep you in mind if someone doesn't ever show up or if we need somebody we'll short of saying putting me on the vendor list out there um, he said, I'll keep your card for future reference. So I was pretty cool, but yeah, I, I feel I could have done better. That's me though. It's hard because, um, like I said before, there is, there's that school of thought that, you know, um, one DJ thinks that, uh, 
you should always short mix everything. You know, it's basically, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to turn your phone off so it's not uh, not chirping here when I'm sitting here. Um, <coughs> that, um, you know, do a short mix, do a quick mix, mi you know, mix in, mix out, in, out, in, out, in, out, done. Um, and again, I understand his thought. I understand why he wants to do that. I don't agree with him 100%. You know, a couple songs, yeah, you can probably <laughs> quick mix. Yeah. Oh, you're in space, huh? I love it. My head's in the clouds because I got, I have two big weddings coming up this weekend. One is 300 plus, and the first one's, I think, 100 and, 120. So I've got a 120 on Friday, and I got a 300 plus on Saturday. And then I just found out on Thursday last week, they're also bringing in the band. So I got to get a hold of the band leader tomorrow, find out what equipment they're bringing, what equipment I'm bringing. We're going to meet in the middle. Uh, she said, work it out between the two of you. And I went, okay. So that's what I'm doing. How did you make that, uh, you make that background on your deal? Oh, uh, I just pressed my picture. And then that little camera thing comes up. And then you can select your background. I'm sitting in front of a green screen right now. So I, I felt like I was kind of a, a tool sitting there. So <laughs> what, what little button? I'm clicking on my picture. What button are you talking about? So if you click on your photo and yeah. then virtual backgrounds comes up or a little blue camera icon. I don't even well, see that. At least for me, it does. Are you on a computer? Yeah. Oh, I'm on my phone. Okay. Oh, on choose virtual phone. background. <laughs> Found it. There you go. There you, you go. got her. There you go. Do Was it that little uh, blue <laughs> camera icon? Now you can change your background. So uh, you yeah. don't want someone coming up going, oh, here, I, I have my, my music here on my tablet. Uh, where do I plug in? Or my yeah. thing, quick gear. I understand that totally. <laughs> that <laughs> down. Yeah, that's. He's from Australia. Hey, I'm going to get dizzy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I, I guess in another uh, side note, you guys know Travis yep. McGuire. Yep. Yeah, his thoughts and prayers out to his family. Um, his dad just passed away. So I just wanted to send my condolences out to today? his family. I, um, I saw the post today. Um, I think it was yesterday. No, 30th. Whatever the 30th. Today, yeah. They, I think the funeral was today. Um, I just want to send my best wishes out to his family. Yes, yes. As if you guys are not familiar with Travis. Uh, he's a good dude. Yeah, he is, he's in the uh, Louisville, Kentucky area. Real, real nice guy. A uh, great guy to talk to. Um, he he is uh, a really down to earth person. A great DJ, and uh, it's sad to uh, to lose loved ones. And uh, you know, uh, my heart goes out to him and his family. And um, yeah, God, God yeah, rest big time, uh, Dad's soul. Um, yeah, for a quick interview. And it, it's, uh. I'm sure he has a lot going on too because he has a lot of weddings like we do. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the wedding yeah. I have coming up, Loading Height this past week was 125 people. The wedding I come up this Saturday is 125. The wedding I have next Saturday, it's over 200 people. And it's at a convention center, which I was talking to today. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of fun. Uh, and, uh, I like, always like sharing pictures and stuff like that. I always uh, send pictures to Aaron of stuff and setups. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to get your guys' idea. I, I talked to uh, DJ Fire before, uh, and Aaron, I'm sure you understand it. it, it you guys, I, I, Joe Bun, um, started the craze with the Asteria lights. So I like the look and i want to have a little different look than the standard dance look. Are the tube lights like the tube ones the tubes yep i, I think they're kind of cool what's up dj adrini um i bought i'm crazy i spent roughly two thousand dollars just just below two thousand <laughs> hair below two thousand he's already bought it yet he wants our <laughs> Four tubes. Oh man, two wire, two IR remote controls. I don't have the 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 wireless unit for four seventy five, which does the uh, tablet work, and you have the a app or on your phone, uh, and DMXable. But four seventy five for that. But 
four tubes, bag, four stands, um, and two remote controls for the lights. Wow. So it's like 10 grand Canadian. That's holy smoke. And yeah, I I don't think it would be that much. Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. Yeah, because yeah, it'd be <laughs> like you can change um, that bad. <laughs> It'd be like um, 27, 2600 and change, something like that. 2700 plus shipping. Probably, yeah. But I bet they look cool. Do you have them yet? No, I have not gotten. I ordered them Monday because I had, okay. I've been saving up. I've been saving my nickels and dimes, being a good, you know, business owner. Yeah. Uh, and, and I will tell you this uh, you missed this out last night uh, in uh, the chill room. Uh, the, in the past week, uh, I upgraded some new equipment. I spent uh, oh. I spent like over forty five hundred dollars. Whoa, that was like me in twenty twenty. Did you buy? I well, I bought started off buying another case of Rock Roll Rock wedges. That's eight hundred dollars. Wow. wow. So you know it, they're they're great lights. They're great up lights. I, I wanted to get another case to replace the um, six uh, Chave. Um, lights I have because the batteries are going bad on them and the batteries Chavez got the battery price down now but they're um $189 a battery and I'm like that's more than the light from Rockville so 800 bucks yeah. six lights case I actually have it sitting in my living room right now the light I have it just sitting there <coughs> the case I haven't opened it up yet I, I, we've been running around all day the uh, FedEx dropped off late, and I got I got work on that tomorrow. Um, so that that's going to be out there tonight. And I bought because I do a lot of video gobos. I bought a new projector. I bought the same projector Rick Webb uses. That's the um, uh, it was uh, like almost sixteen hundred dollars <throat> for that projector. And I bought the uh, case he uses off of Amazon, which I have the case here today. The projector is supposed to get tomorrow. Uh, I got from B&H uh, the projector. So, you know, so $800 for light, $1,600 for projector, uh, $200 for the case, and then 2000 just below $2,000 for, for a stereo light. So... Yeah, I, wow. I spent a few bucks for uh, the rest of the year for the weddings, but yeah. Watched... So visually, you upgraded your system visually. Yes. So you did a major visual upgrade. Yes. And the projector. Do you think I you can get that for... back? Oh yeah, uh, the, vid the, the 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 old projector we've had for a few years. I bought that used. Um, yeah. It's big, heavy. It's um, it takes a long time to set up because you got to do a lot of things manually on it. And um, it's a great projector. It has, you know, not it has a lot of time still left in the bulb and everything. <coughs> so it's 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 fine. Uh, but I like how the one the Epson that the Rick Webb uses uh, automatically sets to the Gobo. And do, that's one of the things we're running into uh, this past Saturday. Uh, we were at uh, Ironworks Hotel in Beloit, Wisconsin. Which I did do a shout out for them. The great venue, great place. Uh, loved going there. Um, and I'm working on the video to put together for YouTube for that one. Uh, Brian Groom was awesome people, awesome ceremony. Uh, only to critique, I would say it was warm in the room, too warm. They should have it much cooler in the room because I was sitting there uh, being a fat guy, <laughs> sweating. Uh, sitting there and that's not that's not that's never good um but wonderful staff wonderful beautiful venue um a lot of uniqueness the room is going to hold like 140 people 150 people we got 125 lots of dancing and lots of fun and but the thing is that we ran to a big like 40 minutes to set up the projector because the projector kept on doing crazy stuff. And I don't want to deal with that anymore. I want to deal with a projector that I can use fairly quickly. Like a printer. I hate those things. Yeah. 
I, it's probably the worst piece of technology on the planet next to that. Yeah. You want it to hook it up, plug it in. It's on the screen and it goes. I hear mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I absolutely understand that. Now I saw DJ Fire setting up uh, some up lights. Are those uh, your shed lights or are those uh, Chavez? Those are sheds. I only have sheds and both lighting. Uh, my both lighting is in the other room. These are the shed ones. But I mean, the shed one versus these are the six by 18s. Um, I can show you one of them. It's dead. <coughs> I'm trying to get them all by so that I can. They have been charged for a while. So they need to. I want to run them dead. But the difference between this one, let me turn up my. See, my that looks exactly here. like my Chavez that I have that I've, I've had them for over five years, six years I've had them for. The difference between this one. And both lighting is the both. This has a glossy finish. I don't know if you can see that mm -hmm. glossy. Yep. The both lighting has a matte finish. Okay. Both lighting also has the little thing that gets you to where you can tip the light, which Rick Webb says he never uses. I never um, used mine. They all have wireless DMX. They all have the exact same deal, which I got one from both lighting. And the glass piece here had fallen. Like it, they've got little tabs on the back that screws to hold them in. They're actually kind of cheap. So I ended up taking the four screws. There's a screw here, here, and then underneath this handle. Well, that's another thing. The handle is very flimsy, um, and it's like aluminum. The handle that comes on the both lighting ones is round, and it's more sturdier. Like you could pull on it and won't bend it. This one you pull on it too much, and it'll bend it. But I had to take all these screws out, take this off, flip the glass over, and I. Um, hot glued it to the inside so it would hold the glass in there let it dry put it back on there and it like you could literally like the glass was laying down on top of those diodes down in there <laughs> I was like so I messaged Rick Webb and he's like are you serious because there was a deal on their eBay page they had four of them for less than five hundred dollars and I was like oh man that's a steal because I asked him I did, Rick Webb I was like how many of these is for and they were nowhere near that so I was like I'm gonna go ahead and buy these Another thing that I ordered off of him was I got an eight light charge case coming for these. Uh, DJ Mike James now has my case that I had the best part 60s in and I had the rock wedges in. Yeah. And he also has my rock wedges now. He bought my rock wedges. Yes, case. yes, yes. Yep. He bought all that stuff off of me. Um, but if you haven't done so, go check his channel out. He's almost at 300 subscribers. We've been doing a lot. We're going to start releasing videos on his channel Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, he's also got a Tech Talk deal now. Like we did the deal to how to change the battery out, which was crazy because that, uh, which how much did you say the batteries were for those, buddy? hundred and some so dollars? The battery, the the Rockville Rock Wedge, you, you guys got the battery for me. I sent the battery down to, to Mike because mm -hmm. uh, I got the batteries from Rockville when I bought the last set of uh, of lights. I'm like, hey, you have you have batteries? They're like, yeah, they're like twenty four ninety five each. So I got four batteries. I'm like, okay, right. I, I want I want four backup batteries because I my first set of Rockville Rock wedges. I think I maybe had I think maybe one or two maybe okay batteries. I, I might swap those out. Uh, I had the newer set, which is the set I have right now um, that I used just this past weekend. Fine, no problem. And then I just got a set today. It's in the box, but the bags are $24. Now, Chave, my Chave's, which again, are, they look just like those units right there. They're called the Freedom Bars, <coughs> aren't they? They call Chave, the Freedom Bars. They're, they're Chave Quad, uh, wireless <laughs> quad. So they look exactly like that. I've had them for about six years. The batteries are going bad on them. Uh, Chave originally wanted three hundred and twenty dollars per battery. I just looked on their website, one hundred eighty nine dollars per battery. Wow, the is light, it the exact? Probably the exact same battery that's in here. I, I don't know. Which, it, it's you go to you can find you, a battery. It's blue. It's in a blue deal because if you look through the little air vents here, you can see the bottom of it. But you'd have to take this whole bottom piece. Rick Webb says all you have to do is take these screws out and this section will come out and then it's all plug and play if you ever have to replace them. Yes, yes. And it's one of the things that uh, it, it kind of makes me mad because 
I've seen on searching the battery on Alibaba, which is the Chinese version of Google, uh, how to buy stuff. I have not ever bought anything off of Alibaba. So if, if you have any guys out there who bought stuff off Alibaba, you know, tell us, you know, how it worked and if it worked well for you or didn't work for you, well for you. <clears throat> but they have the same batteries directly from the manufacturers in China for $39 each. Now I can deal with. But I was like, I don't want to put, you know, get four batteries, you know, t- basically $200 each. That's almost $800. Or versus or for eight hundred dollars, I could buy a brand new one with a case, six lights, and the rock rock wedges. Again, if I need new batteries, twenty five dollars, and you know, uh, like uh, Mike James did on video, fifteen t- minutes to change one out, you're done in our voice. You could probably change one out at a venue if a battery went bad, and you're like, you have an extra battery with you. You're like, oh, I know this battery's not doing well. I could swap hot swap it right there, basically. And get the other battery in there and just plug the unit in and charge battery up. But um, that rock wedge, when I got it, it came that way with the bad battery in it. So I, it's been, I've always had to plug it in. Every I just thought, and I called them, and I was like, hey, you know, if this has a bad battery, why don't you say, oh, at the time, they wasn't selling the batteries. They were like, oh, no. And they tried to say that it's not field replaceable. You can't work on it. You have to send it into a licensed technician. And I'm like, ah. It's not that hard to figure out. We proved them wrong. Licensed by whom? Licensed by Rockville or licensed by a, a licensed a, electrician? Mm-hmm. You, know, do, you know, okay, well, I know licensed electricians. And one of them is Howie Darkstar. And, you know, he's on Disc Jockey yep. over at a Disc Jockey News channel. And Howie uh, has replaced batteries. And I know, Aaron, you've, you, you've heard Howie talk. We've talked to Howie tons of times in, you know in yep. person and yep. um also on, on video chat and he's replaced batteries on things and yep. you remember he built the howie box 10 years ago and yeah. he knows about very batteries. knowledgeable very yeah. knowledgeable <clears throat> oh i always say the, the man is a genius oh yeah if, if you guys say one word it would come to howie dark star genius is the is the first thing that comes to my mind with him the man it knows so much it's it's so grateful when you get to talk to him and you get to hear those uh, little brain nuggets um that they like to leave behind but you know it, it, it's it's one of the things that it's very frustrating as a dj and having equipment and i'm sure you run into aaron and nathan is if something is easily swappable with a, a quick plug i feel the company should sell Hey, you know what? This board, we sell you the whole board. You just plug, you unscrew four screws. You take out the guts, unscrew the four screws of the board or six screws of the board. There's three plugs. Here's yeah. the new board. Boom, boom, boom. They should, yeah, they should make some money off of it. I'm not saying you should make money, but don't charge so much money that it's not worth repairing. Yeah. Like if you bought a Pioneer uh, battle mixer and your crossfader goes in it, and you can buy a generic one for 25 bucks or you can buy the pioneer one for $300 like come on make it serviceable make it affordable to service and make your i would pay extra money to make sure it was the actual brand as long as they're not stupid on the price well yeah and it, it you and i are both ford and i know uh um nathan has a, a dodge for his uh, business right. for his truck and you know when we go buy parts for our vehicles yeah, uh, either for that or like um, I had to take uh, Tracy's uh, SUV in for service. Uh, she's a problem and took it back to the GMC dealership. And they got order apart and so forth, and so on. But anytime we do stuff, even stuff like oil changes, stuff like that, the oil filter, I want a GM oil filter. When I do oil changes on my Ford, I mm-hmm. make sure it's a Ford OEM oil filter. I may yeah. use Ford oil but I want OEM filter. My my yep. van, my Sprinter, I take it to a different shop than the Mercedes dealership, but they put all of Mercedes parts in. And just like Nathan, I'm sure for most parts, he puts, you know, Mopar parts on a vehicle. If something's off brand, a little cheaper, but equal quality, and you don't yep. have other problems, then no pro- I have no problem with that, you know, or, you know, put Ray Bestis brakes on there, or, you know, you're using a different oil or using a different part. No problem, but... If I'm looking at, I want to keep myself as original OEM as much as possible, but 
sometimes, again, some of these manufacturers, especially in the DJ world, they are going to be outrageously priced. Now, I do want to say this, and I got to do another shout out right now to RCF. So one of my RCF J8s, um, after a gig we got done, uh, I took that, we took the speaker out and we heard something rattling around inside the, 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 the head. So there's eight drivers in the head. So eight speakers yeah. in the head because uh, I had the J8 line arrays and there was something j- jiggling around in there. And I talked to a couple of people, including Eric from uh, Good Guys DJ Service. He's a authorized, he sells RCF. To, he's like, well, open up, see what parts you need. Tracy's like, well, contact RCF and see what the warranty is on it. Contact RCF. They are very quick and they send you a form. They're like, fill this form out. And I'm like, okay. They're like, okay, send it to their repair center in New Jersey. And I've had those speakers now for going on five years. So yeah. they're not, you know, brand new speakers. They're going on five years. No, they're in perfect condition. There's not scratch on them. I keep them in you know, bags. You know, everything, everything, anything like the poles and stuff like that. I replace the poles because the poles are too scratched up or they get bent. Replace the poles cheap. Um, and I'm like, okay, fine, great. I send it. I'm expecting a bill. They repaired it for free. They said four to six week turnaround. I got it back in less than two weeks. Whoa. For, for no charge. I had to pay for shipping there. So it was whatever UPS charged us, $25 or whatever it was to ship it. But they shipped it back for free and they repaired it for no charge or warranty. Really? Yes. I got to say to RCF, thank you, RCF. RCF, that's, really. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because I told them, you know, <gasps> where I bought it from and everything like that. And they're like, aren't warranty fixed? Huh. Cool. So I've got, me and DJ Mike James has been, well, I know he, I think he might be getting ready to buy my uh, Rockville Collaps- talk Rockville collapsible totems that I have. Uh, they're actually at the shop up in the loft, but uh, he's going to, but I've been wanting, I don't know, I follow this guy on YouTube. He's a DJ. I think his name is DJ, it's I think Fiesta. You guys ever watched him? What's his name? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, he does a lot of Sweet 16s, and he's kind of, it seems like he's a younger guy, um, but he's got a cool setup that he does, and I would love to do this for some weddings or some, you know, sort of, you know, prom or something, you know, the home church thing. There's also another deal that I've been looking at. As you see over here, right there, <laughs> I have Cedar Link Trussing, which is identical to Global uh, Trussing, um, just price tags a lot cheaper. Um, so I was kind of wanting you guys to look at a couple different setups and tell me what you guys think. Now, I think I should be able to share my screen, right? Uh, you should should be be able able to. to. Down here at the bottom, it says share screen. Yeah, you should be able to. Well, I'd have to see how, uh, how. Oh, it says host has disabled, yeah, participant screen sharing. So that's, that's a that. no. That's a no. <laughs> that's negatory. That's a negative. I, I go to McDonald's sometimes and get food at night, and they'll be like, Hi, would you be using a My Rewards card? And I'm like, uh, negative. And they're like, 10 4. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to go ahead and share, go ahead and share, and we can, I might have to adjust something. So you guys are watching Twitch. Still, don't don't, it's don't it's turn away. Yet. Says it's still disabled. Okay, yeah, because we're recording, that's why. Okay. Okay, I'm looking for the guy on here. Well, um, let me, hold on here. I'll just pull it up on my phone, and then I can show you guys that. Oh, F-I-E-Z-T-A? Z-T-A. Z-T-A-F-I-E-Z. Letter Z. Like zebra, zoo. We're closer to proper English than you are. He's got a one point seven. call it a Zod. A Zod. We don't call it a Zod. It's a zoo. <laughs> you ever look at a Camaro and say Z28? Those are cool, uh, man. No, no. So Z28. this is what I've been thinking about doing. 
You might know yeah. to buy this whole setup is $3,600, although Cedars Link wow. told me they would give me a discount. Eight feet by eight feet. So that's a six. Comes with everything. Corner. The corners, the truss, the, the bottom plates, which the weird thing is the bottom plates are the exact same plates I have as my top plates on these. Yeah. <laughs> so that's 16 square feet. That's a huge area in the center of a dance floor. That, you can cover a lot of dance floors with that. Well, what do you call it? Um, with the trussing I have here, I've got a stick here, and you can't see it, but there's a stick, well, stick over there. Um, so there's two six and a half footers, and I have another one in the other room up on the loft. So there's another. So I could technically take and add another stick on this side and another stick on this side and make it wider. And I've got those little pieces that are like, almost three feet tall. They're like 2.75 feet. And I could make it taller if I wanted to make it like 10 feet. So do you think that would be cool? Um, are you thinking about picture. DJing underneath that, like in the middle of it? Or are you thinking about making that no, into the well, dance floor? Like the home's church, like here. Hold on, let me show you here something. I think it looks really cool. I'm just trying to see the function. Yes. Is it worth it? It would be for bigger events. It would be like the Holmes Church that I did for that. Um, the prom? Uh, the prom? Yeah, prom? I can think. Um, the prom? They, had, they move all the chairs in the sanctuary and that becomes a dance floor. Well, they actually had a company bring in a bunch of games and stuff for the people to play, which nobody hardly played them. They were dancing. But he brought in a dance floor. Um, I think he brought in a 24 by 24. Or yeah, I think it was 24 by 24 dance floor. I figured I could set that above. And then, you know, we could have lights hanging. I told Mike, I said, if I get something this big, we're probably going to have to join up with me and help me with lights because I don't know if I have enough lights to, what do you call it, make that look right. But um, Yeah, make it pop. It would be tough. But I will uh, be up on the stage with my booth and the lighting will just be out there. I don't think you need a lot, really. If you were smart about it, you threw one in every corner – one on every top corner and one halfway, I think you'd be fine. Let me try, hold on a second here. I'm trying to find the picture from the last one I did so I can show you, Aaron. I don't know if you watched that video. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I try to watch along the lines of Aaron of uh, kind of doing the, because if you're doing it in the center of a dance floor. That was the, that was the setup last yeah, year. Yeah, kind of the, the so goal post. I, like, I, I like Come that. On. I like that look. Having that square yeah. rectangle in the middle of a dance floor, I, I don't know. I, 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 I it, it, yeah. it's, it's cool, but I it's think like, I think what you're doing now is right. Well, okay, hold on here. Fine. You know that little plastic no, thing to burst your bubble on the, in pizzas to make sure the box doesn't smush the center of the pizza. Mm -hmm. That's what that 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 four post thing reminds me of in the middle of a dance floor. It's like you're waiting for the ceiling not to smash a dance floor or something, you know. It, it's I, I I think it's for what you're trying to do, all that work. I don't I don't see you know again if you're doing a a three or four or five hundred kid, you know, homecoming or most most of the time at the homes church, I think they have between two and three hundred. Or no, maybe it was a hundred and. I'm trying to think, how many did we have? I think they were only supposed to have 100 and 150. We ended up having 200 last year or something. Yeah, yeah, but I, I feel if you had like you know, three, four, five, six hundred kids in a gym, you had that in the center with lights out of it, and then you ran the cable up, power up to the ceiling. Or That's some of the big uh, companies up here do for some of the schools. And they charge like, you know, 20 grand, 30 grand to do a, you know, a prom or homecoming. And they bring a pay more DJ in and, bucks. Well, again, this, That's this, all this, yeah, this, is what, this is what they do. They bring a famous DJ in for the radio. You know, they bring a radio DJ in. They're like, this is DJ so-and-so. They bring them in and they, they'll put up one of those uh, basically in a center with lights. And that way, you know, it, it, it has a center of the dance floor lit as well as they do a trussing. And they, they 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 run you know line arrays from the ceiling and kind of like a concert. And um, so this is DJ Fiesta setup. His is a little bit bigger. I don't think I'd go quite as big, but kind of in the concept. I don't know if you guys can tell. 
see that's that seems like overkill. Unless you have like well, a couple thousand people. I wouldn't go quite as big. Yeah, so he's got it, it, that to me right seems here, like overkill. Two, he's got two six foot pieces. I would probably do one, and then I'd have the elbows on each side and do one six foot piece coming out, and then do legs on each side. Yeah, I I, I feel that's overkill. Well, okay. we had just a way. So Adrian, Adrian E. asks, although it looks cool, do you have clients asking for it? Do you have do you have a market for it? That's that's the key for me. So when I'm looking at this and I'm I'm going, that looks awesome for us. Is that going to be awesome for your paycheck? And then well, all the work, the labor to put it up, up, put it up and take it down. Man, that's a lot of work, dude. And well, that's again, what DJ Mike it, did, just tell me. He's like, man, that's a lot of work. And I'm like, well, it is. But what if people start hearing, hey, DJ Fire's got this awesome setup. We don't need to hire DJ so-and-so. Let's give him a call. You know, we'll pay him a few extra couple hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, I, I, awesome I setup. if you build it, they will come kind of mentality, you know, uh, full yep. of dreams. White Sox, White Sox roll. Uh, Cardinals, Cardinals. Uh, well, that's that's fine. <laughs> they're, they're against the Cubs. I'm a White Sox fan, so. Um, and you should be oh, a, easy, you should be a easy. Fan, not Cardinals fan, Illinois, Illinois yeah. first, man. <laughs> but, anyways, well, Rangers, Rangers, I'll get out of here, so, <laughs> be so gone, the, uh, be gone, Canadian <laughs> Rangers. I like that. These, these are the come on, focus. I don't know if you don't have the market for it, you don't have you know, you don't have the, the sales for it. I, I'm with Adrian. If that's, you don't have it, why do it? You have that would cause it to come on. Why won't that focus? I have a good camera and it's not one. You can I kind see of see it. what it I, is. I see, I see. That it. is really cool. That yeah, allows like you that. to trust and go from this way to this way. Yeah, let's so you angle when it. You, you know, like it, a it swivel. Bends. Yeah, it swivels back and forth. So two of those through Cedars Link. Yeah, is uh, five hundred and forty dollars, and I would probably get. Oh, they probably throw two more. <laughs> but again, off you of had to climb for it, you know. There, there's again. I just, I just spent I again. I, I just spent a bunch of money to change my lighting yeah, you, a little bit and be but better. Lighting packages, with gobos. But those gobos are already. I already. Have, I have a gobo this weekend. A video gobo. I have a, a gobo next weekend. Uh, I have a gobo. Yeah. Uh, I'm picking up a projector tomorrow to to put a a logo up on because it's a outdoor tent wedding on the weekend on Saturday, so and they wanted the logo up on there. So I I'm going to do it. Two of these. I will be getting two of those. Oh yeah, those are the Intimidator three sixties. Three sixties. I have nice. two of them. I got white. the fives. I got the old ones. I got the old Intimidators. They're bright, man. I have two three sixties. I'll be using them. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Cardinal Rangers, uh, <laughs> DJ oh. Adrian, Adrian E is like Cardinals Rangers. It's like, ah. I don't know if you can see that, it's backwards a thousand dollars for these 360s. A yep. piece, yeah. I have two of them, I yep. have two white ones I'll be using this Saturday. Yeah, I gotta go grab no. them out of storage because I'm Canadian. Now, I'm supposed to say go Jays, go, but okay, Toronto, you're 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 there, kind of you far from Toronto. Canada? If I have to. Are you in Canada, Aaron? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Calgary. Yeah. Yep. What just, part of Canada are you in? Calgary. Calgary oh, so west. Just north of like so Utah you know, and there's a guy, Montana. There's a guy. I don't know how close he lives to Toronto. Um, That's Toronto. He's Calgary. I'm, west. I'm, I'm four okay. days away well, from him. He might be, I don't know. His name is Bill, and he has a YouTube channel called Bill's T-Max, and he lives in Canada. Oh, well. um, you might check him out. He's kind of an older guy. He used to work in a cemetery and he filmed a lot, you know, building stuff and doing some gaming and stuff. Well, the cemetery told him he couldn't film back there anymore. So oh. now he just does stuff up by his house, but he lives in Canada. He's a good friend of mine. Cool. Kind of Bill from Canada. Sorry, I don't know Bill from Canada. Yeah, they're, 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 you know, there's only 30, what, 36 or 37 million Canadians, but yeah. Uh, you guys don't know each other. <laughs> no. I know I know a lot of people. I, I always say that I have a saying that goes, um, I know everyone. I just haven't met them all yet. <laughs> so this guy here has a cool setup. What do you all think of that? 
that oh, seems nice. really cool. But again, I, with all the moving heads, a, a, that right there for me would be for a big crowd. Again, you're having three, four, big event, five special event, or yeah. five hundred people. That would be cool. You're doing a rock event. Anything over 200, two moving heads at the most, like yeah. 200 and below. If you're doing, if you if you are doing, um, you know, 50, 60 people with that kind of light, it's 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 over. It's too much. If you have, you know, 150 people, I can see, you know, maybe the, one of those. If you have 300 right. people, definitely both of those. And and the reason why is that you don't also don't want blind grandma. Hashtag right. don't blind grandma. Yep. Right. Big time. Well, I know that, what do you call it? You know, I I like the moving heads. I'm in the process of getting two more 260s, and I'm gonna get over the winter for next season. I'm going to get two 360s. And I think that'd be cool because the two sixties are okay, but they just look small on top of a totem. If they're hanging from a trussing, they look the okay. But they're are, a little small. are good size. And again, I got two of them. They're 100 watt LED. They throw light, and the 360s are they're pretty heavy. I, I I will this weekend. I have my uh, platinum package, so they get moving heads, uh, two to, uh, two totems, the colossal totems like you have. I'll put them the 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 light on top. They're white. Put them up. Uh, they're doing amber for up lighting, so I'm gonna do amber up lights in those, and uh, I have my all white setup. So. We'll have that, but it's one of the things that again, this is uh this wedding is because it took the pop package, they get that, but the room is pretty big. Plus, also there it was 125 people, the room can hold 225 people. So the room is big, it could take that. Um right. if you're and, and again, that that's that's a primary lighting, that that's that's it for dance lighting. Uh other than the up lights maybe and changing color, I'm not have any additional lights two moving heads i feel that's more than enough for 125 people the next no. next uh saturday's wedding that's over 200 and that right there i should have my asteria lights i'm going to be using those the asteria lights for 200 people with some a little bit up lighting too same kind of thing no moving heads because they didn't want moving heads but asteria lights and we're gonna go from there right so, so I me and Mike smarter and harder. Me and Mike are doing, and I think he's posted about this on his. Well, I know he made a video because I helped you make it, but um, we're doing a really cool wedding uh, reception. Well, he's doing wedding and reception. I'm helping him with the reception. Uh, October eighth, I want to say, and this is what the venue looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. He, we were him and I were talking about it. That uh, carousel kind of building. <coughs> And we're talking about sound and stuff. Focusing, but yeah, it, it's called the Chautauqua, and we're he's gonna do his, which he's downsized a little bit. I'm gonna bring in both of my totems. Uh, we're gonna run the 260s on top of those, um, and then I've got Mr. Big 10R over here that we're gonna use uh, to spotlight the bride and groom on their dance. Cool. So I'll be able to control that. We're gonna have all my uploading, so eight. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, possibly, depending on how many he has, he's getting more. Um, we're going to do up lighting all the way around that. I think the black curtain, he's going to use his RF1s. Uh, I'm going to set up a table somewhere on the side so I can control lighting. I can do up lighting shows and stuff like that. Uh, I can control the moving head, uh, which we're going to put on, I think, one of the collapsible totems from Rockville uh, and set it off to the corner. Now, where should he thought we should put the moving head clear to the back of the room? I could obviously use a wireless DMX receiver um, and have it shine towards us, or should we have it off to the side and have it shining back towards, like, I mean, for a spotlight? Which, I mean, I don't know if you'd want the spotlight coming back. Of course, it'll be up in the air and shining down, not so much straight out. Well, if you're following the like, couple for the spotlight, you want to have it in a way that yeah it's up and down on them if you're trying to light and do a crowd you want it to go above their head again you don't want to blind them you want them to enjoy right. the light and that's the thing you were watch like shows and one of the shows i would tell you guys to watch if, if you guys haven't done so already uh ghosts um he's a swedish guy he's a rock dude 
uh, has a couple of cool songs. He uh, had his concert earlier this year and had some really cool lighting effects with moving heads and up lights, orange and blue and all this other stuff. And it just had really cool looks. If you get a chance to watch that and you notice that the lights really don't swipe you too much and blind you, it's more above you. It's more a look, not blinding people in the eye. So that's that's one of the things you want to take a look at. And and you want to make sure you're not blinding people. You want to make sure that you're giving a feel, but not getting, you know, their eyes burnt out of their head. Well, this is the big 275 watt. Of course, I could I don't have to use the full, I can use the dimmer, but I mean as you can see down inside there, it's of course the, the deal's closed, the bulbs behind that. It's got a shutter inside of it. But that thing, I mean, this is also by sheds. You can see the logo, it might be reverse there, but um this is a 500 dollars moving head but i mean the base of it's pretty small but it's it's big and it's got um a spot and i can also widen it to a, a you know like a wash so i can give the bride and groom a bigger area and i thought that would also look good for photographer and i mentioned to mike he said well he was kind of like oh i don't know if we need to do that i said we can think of the pictures that that's going to do in there of the evenings especially with a little bit of fog you know, just, you know, or low lying fog, which I have my low lying fog machine. I haven't decided if we're taking that yet or not, but. Are you guys still allowed know. to use fog in haze and clubs and stuff? Even water based? I, I haven't used fog in probably 15 years. years. I haven't in years. Yeah. The only time I'm ever going to do it again, I think I might rent a hazer for this weekend's thing because it's outside and it's in a tent. So there's not going to be any fire suppression crap to deal with. So I'm probably going to get one for the, it's people I know. So I'm probably going to get one for them and then light it up a bit, bring my movers. All you, you got to do is go to one of the uh, uh, Halloween stores that popped up and buy a cheap one. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I'm going to rent it. I'm just going to go rent a Hazer, like a couple of heavy-duty ones, and I'm going to light Hazer, them up. You can go to Hazer's RS and rent some? No, I go to uh, – we have a big chain of stores here. The people that make Yorkville okay. have a big chain of stores. Really? Their the department is actually now. quite good. Oh, yeah, that was the ADA. Yeah. We have this exact model at our church, and we use we use it during music, you know, song service, and uh, we haze the stage to make it look cool. And then about, I don't know, 10 minutes before the uh, preacher comes on and the whoever's speaking, they'll shut it off, and the HVAC system sucks it all out of there. It's, it's crazy how good our HVAC system is. But not bad. But we're it's also really there because when it's warm out. We're all, well, that's one thing. It never does. It never gets cool in there or hot in there. And we've got big tubes running down the ceiling. And there's, I mean, it, sometimes it's loud. And you can't even hardly hear the preacher. It's, there's so much wind coming out of it. But well, again, we're redoing cool the stage that the we, week after. You don't have to worry about being saying you're hot. You got to leave early church. Don't want everyone to leave church early. Never hashtag. Don't leave church yeah. early. We, uh, we're redoing the stage the week, week after Christmas. Oh, wow. They're making it because it's got one, two, like three, two or three levels, and they're going to make it to one level. So that's going to be different for DJing, too, for next year for up there. Well, cool. Uh, I, think, I thank you guys for the, uh, the advice. Like I said, I haven't decided what I want to do. Um, they were really impressed with the, um, the setup I had last year. Of course, I wouldn't mind making it just a tad bit bigger because uh, I plan on having next. I would like to go taller. If I did the same. I call it horseshoe. And yeah. if I went taller, that wouldn't look so bad because those moving heads were a lot of times hit me in the back of the head because they wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, you can add an extra <laughs> couple feet and then go a little taller. That's not a problem. Hey, look for, yeah. I, would I put a center uh, post like that in the middle? Again, if I was doing a crowd of 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000, oh, heck yeah, that would be cool. Put some lights up and you can, you know, have that. Uh, but just for, uh, you know, 100 kids, 150 kids, yeah, I just think that would be overkill. Just be over. Well, I was worried about like it getting knocked over. But I was like, you know how much weight that is? It's a lot of weight, especially when you put some of these lights on there that weigh 80, 90 pounds. The, you know, or the, where they don't weigh 80. That's the other thing is that what you want to be safe. Yeah. If I did 10 of these uh, 10 R's, um, I mean, those are, those are 45 pounds a piece, I think. 10, that's four or 400 pounds. Yeah. That's, that's some extra pounds there on a truss. So I mean, pulling it down. That's like that's like one of me, you know, my fat butt 
standing there on the truss, one of me. <laughs> we're not, we're not worried about it going anywhere. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it, well, it's not that. It's but, a lot of weight to throw over because, you know, 400, 400 pounds falling, that's a lot of weight. And trust right. me, I've fallen enough that's times. Something it's like, you know, I mean, the, from what I noticed last year, the kids didn't really seem to be rambunctious. You know, they are special needs kids. So that's one thing I wouldn't be too worried about because they're not rambunctious. They're not, you know, they were I'd just dancing, having a good caution. time. They weren't getting all I, I, wild. I still would keep it on the stage. So with that said, I know uh, DJ Fire, we were talking a little early before the recording, uh, you're working on a couple of new, and we're not saying brands, we're not saying what it is. I got a sneak preview of your next release, but you are going to be working on another release for another product review coming up very shortly. When 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 are you hoping to get that uh, review out? Well, it depends. I'm waiting on an email because uh, Ava doesn't message me until... Between now and three o'clock in the morning, most of the time she'll check her emails when she wakes up. I don't know if she has an email or a computer at her house, but they are, she should be getting in her office right about now, unless she's not going in until later. But I'm waiting on her to find out if we're going to get a second one. And if that's the case, it'll take four or five days to get it because it comes directly from overseas. Um, but uh, I'm still waiting to find out what she wants to do. Uh, but if not, I will probably have that video out by the end of the week, I would say. So I've got one coming out right. tomorrow right. that I've had so, for a little over a month. Could, do we get a tidbit on that? Do we get is it audio or video? What do you What do you mean, audio? Or video? Your video. It's, uh, it's, it's lighting. A, it's light. No, yeah, some vid oh, Okay, the beat part of the up. AV. Hold on, All right, let me go get something. Hold on. You gonna give us a little bit of something? Oh, he's gonna give you a little bit of something. I, 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 I seen what he was showing me, and I can't talk about it because he needs to do a video on it, and I don't want to spoil. Yeah, him. you still, you still got to get all your ducks lined up, and. Yep, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, it, not uh, spoiling. It is nothing. a cool thing. It is something that I saw. They sent me this hat that says I'm the lighting guy. So there you go. Yeah. There you go. I do a lot of lighting. <laughs> gotta get one of those for Howie now too. Um. Aaron, it's pretty cool. Yo, what are, you, I'm what working, are you working on? Yeah, I've got one in, and you know what? I'm gonna wait. Um, there's a reason why. There's three we three reasons why, and one. My initial, it was just an unboxing. How do you guys feel about unboxing videos? Pretty boring. You open it up, the items in there, the cables in there, and it's. A lot of people do them. I mean, um, I like them. The company that I always deal with say, you know, we want you to show the packaging how it arrived to you, so, you, so we can see exactly how our product arrived to you. I mean, it's okay. kind of. Uh, I like it because I don't know what's in the box. All right. At least I try it on. Now I try not to get. You know, if a company sends me a deal that says, "Hey, we'd like you to try out this product," yeah, cool, awesome. I don't look into it until I get the product because. You know, and Mike, he's been trying to do some research on some of his stuff that got, um, you know, he got sent. He's like, oh, I'm just trying to notice. I'm like, you know, I, I like the point that when I open the box, I don't know what's going to come out. I don't know if it's broken. I don't know if it's, okay. if it's something All right. like. And I was that's a lot of people good. like. They like my first reaction. Oh, this is, this is sweet. You know, this is awesome. Or, All right. well, this is a worth you know, worthless piece of crap, you know, what? <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted your opinion on that because I'm like, I was going to ditch the unboxing part of it. Cause really we've all opened the box before we've all pulled that item up before and we've all seen it before, but maybe we haven't, maybe it's got a little value in it. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, voice over it first. I wasn't going to, and I was just going to speed it up just to dump it out, but I'm not going to dump it out. I'm going to wait till the other things arrive. There's three things still I'm waiting on. And then do it more as one. I might actually be using the product before I get the video done. <laughs> before I get the video done. So I've, I've done that. I've got a bit in the way. Yeah. I've also got this company that sent me stuff before. They are an emergency lighting company. Yeah. Oh, cool. Out of Pacific Northwest, Sirenette. Go check them out on YouTube. Uh, I've had the pleasure. Uh, sure, of I'm closer to you. I'm closer to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, they're over in um, Oregon. Oh, yeah. I'm not too far from there. Yeah, you're Oregon, Montana. Montana, Idaho. I'm real close to Idaho, Montana. Yep. 
Yeah, they do a lot of uh, product deals, uh, talking about you know strobe lighting, and they do a lot of installs with police cars, fire trucks. That's I need more stuff like that personally in my other life, but yeah. Um, Some emergency this, uh, yellow emergency lights. Yeah. Yep. For, uh, they have all their your regular job. Um, that's no longer going to be around much longer. So why? I've slowly phased it out. Uh, DJing full time has been on my bucket for the past 10 years and I'm slowly there. I'm getting there. So, so Eric, I, I know how it do? was because I went from working for a corporation, a yep. big corporation in retail management. Uh, and then one day I looked at it and said, my business, either my business grows or my business dies. Yep. What do I want? That's to do? Right. And I picked business grows and yep. left and haven't looked back since. Me too. I'm almost at that where, point now where I'm probably 60, 40 DJing in my day job. And it's I'm like, I own a company. DJs. I do. We do underground line locating. That's, um, you know, we find buried lines and it's a good job. I've had it for 25 years. I've been doing it. I'm on my own, completely self-employed both. And um, Aaron, you will feel happy then because uh, I actually, I don't know what they call it up there, but down here we call it 811, the one call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I did a stump grinding uh, probably, well, I can tell you here when it was. Uh, about a month ago and the beginning of the video um i mean i i the city's done some work out in this lady's front yard and i've, I've seen them locate stuff up there so i knew exactly where everything was up there there's only a water line that comes in up there uh but everything else was but uh in the beginning of my video i have the 811 logo i showed the flags that said we were okay to dig Yep. And I usually before you dig. And we're just grinding out a tree stump over there. Always call Julie before you dig. Let's there you go. Up in the ground and not put one of us in the ground. Yep. Less likely to damage. It looks like you have something happening, including hurting yourself. But uh, 811 found that video. And they have been using it at their uh, deals. They go around talking to people. They said, that's awesome that, you know, you're putting them in your videos. Cool. You know, telling people. That. And uh, sometimes I'll see people putting a fence in the backyard. I'm like, did you call Julie? No. What happens if you hit something in the ground? You know, if you hit something in the ground, tear it up, you got to pay for it. If someone comes and locates and you dig something up that wasn't located, then you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So there's, only that. there's a couple of different levels of locating that, that exist and the part I do is beyond the public locating beyond the one call and beyond the 811 and what I do is I do like the private stuff so the the gas line that goes to your shop the power lines that go to your shop um, the over and above stuff that the 811 people don't do that's what I do I do the other end of it so I I get paid for each call we go out to from the homeowner or from the landowner or the company. So I've been doing that for quite a while. When people, and this is a safety thing. People should be doing that no matter what they're going to do. If they're going to yep. dig more than a foot deep. Oh yeah. If they're going to dig a couple of scoops and put a little plant in. That's one yep. thing. It's okay. But if you're not sure, and you know, there's power lines going stuff, you know, there's gas lines going to a garage or going to, you know, whatever. Yep. It is much easier and simpler and safer yep. to have someone come out and do that. And even as DJs, as, as DJs, when we are doing stuff, you know, we run, you know, extension cables, we run power cables. Uh, we want to make sure those are safe as well. And kind of the same thing with 811. We want to make sure it's marked and that way it, it's safe so that way people don't trip on. We don't want people tripping on our cables, tripping on our wires. And we don't want to use our insurance. You know, we have insurance for a reason to protect us, but we yep. want to make sure we don't use it. I don't mind paying the insurance fee. I never want to use my insurance. I never want to have no, to that's right. that phone call. That's right. On that note, gentlemen, I appreciate the chat tonight. And, yep. uh, this is, and this is, this is going to be done tonight. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much for coming. Aaron, the DJ, thank you for coming in. DJ Fire, Aaron, the DJ, both can be found thank on you. social media, YouTube, Instagram and all the other fun places. Again, if you're watching this on the, on the repeat on my channel, you should have been here on Twitch. If you're watching on Twitch right now, you should be able to see this in about a week over on my YouTube channel. Either way, again, I appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Thank you all for tuning in, watching. And again, thank you, uh, Adrian E., for talking and asking some questions. 
greatly appreciate it. And hopefully you guys have a safe week. Enjoy and keep everything going, guys. Thank you so much.